On February 15 to 17, 2018, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA held its 8th Annual Day on the Hill and 12th Annual National Public Affairs Seminar in Washington, D.C. 107 delegates from 74 chapters across 30 states participated in the three-day event. This year's event focused on the ongoing ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya Muslim community in Myanmar. Since last August, over 688,000 Rohingya Muslims have fled the country to bordering Bangladesh, with over 13,000 reportedly killed, including many women and children. Delegates from the Ahmadiyya Muslim community were joined by Rohingya Muslim leaders in the United States, led by Reza Uddin, council member of the Arakan Rohingya Council. The situation for the Rohingya is beyond what I can describe because it is my own. In Mongolia, my own home is being destroyed. And a lot, a lot of my family's members are there. My own brothers, my older brother is still there. He is dodging the bullet. And around my home town, there's a 330 villages, all destroyed every single house with the fire and thousands thousands of close to one million cross to the bangladesh the buddhist vigilantes and burmese army even the babies they throwing in the fire so as an international community we have the duty and moral duty to talk for them and Burmese government is doing nothing. And especially when Burma has a change in a democracy and the Aung San Suu Kyi Nobel Peace Laureate, we, everybody has the hope the be situation will be better under her leadership. But situation get even sour under her leadership. At U.S. Capitol Hill, delegates met with and briefed over 210 congressional offices, including many members of the U.S. House of Representatives and U.S. Senate. On Thursday, February 15th, the 32-member Ahmadiyya Muslim Congressional Caucus, led by co-chairs U.S. Congresswoman Jackie Speer and U.S. Congressman Pete King, headlined a special reception to draw awareness about the plight of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. No matter where there is uh, religious intolerance, you will speak up. So you've really become the conscience of religious freedom in this country. So I really rely on um, your voice and your willingness and your courage to speak out when others will not. And yet His Holiness has spoken out about this in a manner um, that is clear and direct and we should take a page um, from his book. A, a Burma was mentioned, and this is really one of the biggest disappointments I've had. I mean, Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, she was a human rights advocate. She suffered, she was a victim. If anyone should know what it's like to be oppressed, it should be her. And yet, uh, what she's allowing to happen in, in Burma is just wrong. It's morally wrong, it's ethnic cleansing. Our Secretary of State has denounced it. And uh, I want you to know that that is also a major priority of mine and of the caucus and of many members of, of Congress. And thank you for your leadership on that. And as I was saying that uh, you are a religion of peace and you already brought peace between Democrats and Republicans in this caucus, which is uh, probably the only peace between us all year. But uh, so thank you for that. The event was attended by over 100 guests, including members of the U.S. Congress, U.S. State Department, U.S. Diplomatic Corps, U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, religious freedom experts, academics, thought leaders, and faith leaders. The event drew media coverage and generated over 270,000 impressions on social media. Amjid Mahmood Khan, National Director of Public Affairs for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, emceed the event and spoke about the need to stand with the Rohingya community. We are a community that is deeply suffering in Pakistan, and our per persecution is quite well known. But as a persecuted community, as a community that understands human suffering, that understands when our brothers and sisters are denied their rights, their right to vote, their right to think freely, 
to call their mosques mosques. As a community that suffers when 29 provinces in Indonesia have banned our community, or 266 Ahmadis in Algeria have been arrested. As a community that has suffered for persecution, we know what it means to be persecuted. And so today and tomorrow, we come on the hill to advocate for our brothers and sisters of the Rohingya community who are suffering. We stand with them. Other speakers at the special reception included. Um, His Holiness Mirza Masrur Ahmad said to Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, he said, all people should be granted true religious freedom and all people should have the right to peacefully practice their faiths and beliefs. Governments should not seek to interfere or legislate against peacefully held religious beliefs. His Holiness is absolutely right. That is true in this country. It's true in uh, Burma or Myanmar. It's true everywhere. Religious freedom is the ability to live according to your deeply held convictions. Whether that path takes you to organized religion or to no religion at all, that freedom must be free for you to find meaning. It's a core value. It's really the most important human right. Without religious freedom, there are no other rights. In that sense, your community has done a tremendous job. Abid Khan, International Press Secretary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, participated in the reception as a special guest from the United Kingdom. And what is His Holiness's message uh, uh, to the American government leaders? Yeah, I think it's just a message that we need to adopt justice at every single level of society, and we need fairness, people need their equal rights, and so in that respect it's just a message of justice and love for all, hatred for none. When it comes to issues of fundamental freedoms, that if any group can be subject to persecution, discrimination, oppression, then no group is safe. And too often the Ahmadiyya community has been that canary in the coal mine, um, targeted over and over again. A special Jumma Friday prayer service was held on Capitol Hill for all delegates. The beautiful thing about this exercise is that we are exercising the right that the Holy Prophet Muhammad had taught us, civic engagement. If there's any other community in the world who has the right to involve themselves civically, it is the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. On Saturday, February 17th, the National Public Affairs Seminar was held at the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. A special panel discussion was also held with Waris Hussein, South Asian policy analyst for the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, in which he described his first-hand experience visiting the Rohingya Muslim refugee camp in Bangladesh. So I was crying and crying, and I'm like, that shaking, like that kind of whole body crying. And he was like, I lost everyone. I had a family of 17 people, and now I have my niece, and I lost her in the way here. He had no one. Forget the house, forget the land, forget everything. You all know this, right? Family is the part of your heart, and, and he literally lost it. He lost a part of his heart that he can never get back. And he watched them being murdered. And he watched the women being assaulted. And he saw these things. And it was so clear at the end of what he was saying was that he felt bad about crying. Abid Khan, International Press Secretary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, participated as a special guest from the United Kingdom. In your duties, wherever you're doing duties in the Jamaat, whether it's in the PR department, media department, any of the other respective tabligh, tarbiyat, we are all, in our own way, representatives of Khalafat, representatives of the Jamaat. And so our conduct reflects on the Jamaat. If we are good, if we are decent, if we are truthful, that will reflect on the Jamaat. But conversely, if we are failing in our duties, lacking in our moral standards, weak in our prayers, that too will reflect upon the Jamaat. Of course, PR is, a, is 
the type of work where you're meeting external people, where you will be giving responses to people. And so we have to be very, very careful in our statements, in the way we meet people, what we tell them, what we say to them, make sure it is aligned with the true teachings of Islam, with the guidance of Khalifa al-Masih. The National Vice President of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, Imam Azhar Hanif, also addressed the delegates. But in the end, I want to pray with you as we pray for each other in this nation, in this world. Our task is tremendous. The responsibility he just laid out before us is no small measure put upon our shoulders. And for that, the prayers that Azua said yesterday, he reminded us in his beautiful khutbah, Allah has taught us everything to pray. The first thing all of us must keep praying in the field of public relations, of spokesmanship, or anything where you have to address someone else a message. Rabbi shrah li sadri. Oh Allah, I am weak. I have no capacity. I have no ability to express myself, to speak clearly. So, oh Allah, expand that capacity. Well, yes, certainly, Amri. And make this task as public relations secretary or any other secretary serving Khalafi, make it easy for me, facilitate my weakness, obvious weakness step. Yafqahu qawli is the last prayer. Only for one purpose. As Amjad Saab said, as Abad Khan said, as Azur said and addressed us a few years ago, we're not doing this for our own personal glory. It has nothing to do with me at this moment when I'm saying this prayer, Allah. Musa didn't want to stand there. It wasn't for his own sake. And so today, as we're going forward, oh Allah, just for one sake I ask this prayer to be accepted so the people will understand my message clearly, directly, and hopefully accept it. Sonia Ahmed, MTA News, USA.